Hey, good afternoon, good late afternoon, early evening to all you guys out there. Um, I have another update. Uh, this update's been coming. I, I posted on it that I was uh, coming out with a air assist ring or collar. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, I finally got the working prototype done and finished doing some testing on it to see how it would perform. Um, I did acrylic and I've done wood and I'll do some here in, in a little bit. I got the machine set up to, to do some. Um, my setup that I have on there right now is a two inch lens mounted on, on the upper part of the, the, um, the nozzle. And the reason for doing that is to allow this to be as close to the material as possible. Uh, typically, I'll run the two inch laser on the bottom so I can get a lot of clearance or a lot more clearance. Um, but with this setup, or with this system, you want this to be as close to the, uh, the wood as possible. Uh, the design of this, I saw a couple people post a couple indirect or um, alternate air systems or what have you um they were pretty good the the biggest problem i had was is not allowing air to get to the nozzle to keep it cool um and if you're putting a lot of air in there and it's not going through the nozzle it's there for keeping debris out and also smoke and to help keep your lens cool so it doesn't overheat and possibly shatter which i've done before um now this this design uh some of you guys obviously out there do mess with 3d printers um this design was based around uh the 3d printer concept if you look on the bottom of the ring you'll see several holes all the way around it all right and what those do is they direct air directly at let's see, let's show you here. this is a medium the medium sized nozzle but it'll work for demonstration but what it does is it allows the air that comes out of these holes to hit the cone go down and pull the air away okay so it creates like a, a vortex to draw that draw the debris and smoke and everything out of the way um, it's a lot more pronounced on the on the the other nozzle because the other nozzle is shorter, and there's more surface area for the air to hit and deflect. Um, I've done quite a bit of testing on acrylic, and like I said, I've done testing on wood as well. Um, the thing is, is with with the uh, the acrylic, I haven't noticed any real discernible difference. Um, it does help keep the, the smoke burn away at higher power. Um, at lower power, when you're just kind of skimming the surface, it really doesn't do much. But when you start getting into doing 30, well, I, I have a 150 watt laser, so you get up into doing 30 to 40, 45 um, on percent on the power to do some deep carving. Um, it, it definitely helps with that because as it's going, there's so much air coming out of here. It's not going directly down through the nozzle, although there is air going through the nozzle. And I'll show you how here in a second. Um, even though there's air, there's a ton of air coming out of here, so it disperses that that fog or mist of, of burnt acrylic out of the way, and it cleans the hole out. It doesn't leave a bunch of white residue. Um, like if you're doing a regular, just a regular laser head without having anything like this, just your, your normal nozzle air. Um, with wood, it's, it's remarkably better. Um, now this here, the wood, I usually run wood at probably, I don't know, uh, I mean, my gauge don't read that low, but just barely off the of zero. So I mean, there's barely any air coming out when I engrave wood. And the reason for that is, as some of you may know, is it leaves a lot of 
uh, you put too much air to it, it leaves a lot of uh, burnt material spattered out onto the wood. Um, typically, I'll do wood at about 15% at about 300. Um, but with this, I can get up to about 35, almost 40, and not have any problems with a uh, with a smoke burning or smoking at the wood, the edges of the wood where you got to clean off your sand or whatever. So this this greatly improves the. Uh, turn this thing off. It greatly improves the the look of the work and the the least amount of work you have to do after the fact. Um, and I'm running this with this on there. On wood, I'm running about 40 to 60 psi, um, and like I said, the, it, you'll see here in a minute when I do a demonstration on it. Uh, if you hang out that long, um, that allows, like I said, the air to just completely disperse everything. You'll notice when I do the first test without the collar on it, um, running maybe five psi, maybe maybe less. I don't know. Um, just enough to keep some air passing through the nozzle. Um, you'll notice how much smoke just pours off of the piece. And then you'll notice when I put this on how little smoke you'll see. Um, and hopefully it doesn't make a fool of me and prove me wrong. But all the tests that I did, that's, that's exactly what happened. So uh, I don't have any doubt that it'll be the same in this. Okay. Um, like, I, like I said before, my big concern with other systems is you're taking air away from the nozzle, which is not good for the lens. Um, I don't know if you can see it right there. That little, little dimple right there. There's a little dimple in there with a hole. You can kind of see the, the lighter color red, and it's a hole. Um, that hole right there allows air to pass through this, and this is cupped out and oversized hard to get a good angle here. Alright. So it's cupped out and oversized. So when you slip this over your your, um, your nozzle cone. Um, Alright Jim, I'll be getting through here shortly. I'm just trying to explain everything. Um, so air comes out of this hole and goes into where your air fitting used to go on your nozzle. Um, it's restricted so it allows Enough air to go through there, I feel is sufficient, um, in my in my opinion, is sufficient to keep the nozzle clear and keep some cooling air going over over the or over the lens. Uh, and then on this end, you have, um, which may or may not be necessary. I usually do things like this as a precaution, so as you use it, it wears out. You can use this as a clamp to tighten down onto the back side of the nozzle. Um, so when it tightens down the back side of the nozzle, it pushes this end tighter up against the nozzle um, and allows for a, better, a little bit better seat of that air, that air pocket there. You can see it right, right in there. Um, this has to be in there when you're not, even if you're not using it, just put it in there to where the threads is just flush on the inside. Um, the reason being is that hole goes all the way through, so if you take it out, it's going to be an opening for air just to pass through. Hey, what's up, Glenn? Um, so if you, if you get get this, it'll come with everything. Just the the coupling and the screw, and um, at a later date, I'll have this as a possible add-on. But if you have your boss toolkit, um, it came with a spare one, and that happens to be what this one is. It's a spare one from there. Um, and you just, it'll be pre-threaded, you just screw it in there, snug, you don't want to over-tighten it, because you'll crush the o-ring, break the o-ring, and possibly damage the threads. Um, again, this is designed with this ridge, sits flush on the top of your, your nozzle, housing, okay? So, So without further ado, I'll go ahead and kind of show you show you what it what I got set up here. Um, what I got set up right now is just a regular burn with the nozzle, and you can see on this here if you look at.